Quetzalcoatlus, the largest animal to ever fly in North America. The medieval age was filled with unbelievably large creatures like the Tyrannosaurus rex, known to be the king of predators on land. But even the T-Rex would have to bow to the Quetzalcoatlus. With a wingspan of more than 40 feet long, which is the largest flying animal believed to have once ruled North Carolina of North America during the Mesoic era. Join us in this video as we explore the infamy of the Quetzalcoatlus, the behemoth petasaurs of North America. The Quetzalcoatlus was a member of the family of petasaurs. Petasaurs such as these flew the skies sometime around the late Cretaceous, known to have perished in the same mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. The Quetzalcoatlus was the largest of the petasaurs that dominated the skies during the Cretaceous era when the dinosaurs ruled the earth. It wasn't without reason that these creatures earned the title of the largest. Their wingspan was easily 12 meters, 40 feet, or more, making them nearly the size of a school bus. Their wingspan is nearly four times as long as the current record holder for the bird with the longest wing length, the wandering albatross. However, despite its enormous size and the fact that it lived alongside Tyrannosaurus, its existence remained a mystery for a long time. Scientists had previously identified numerous enormous petasaurs, the largest known flying animal before Quetzalcoatlus. Scientists often assumed that each newly discovered huge petasaur signified the maximum size an animal could be while still being able to fly. Only in the early 1970s were the first members of this gigantic species discovered. The holotype, which consists of the humerus and a wing finger, was uncovered in 1971 in Texas Big Bend Park's Javelina Formation, which dates back to the Mesoic period. Numerous specimens of a similar, smaller species were discovered a year later. Larger creatures are often only partially preserved in the Javelina Formation. Four more years after the specimens of the larger and smaller members of the species were discovered, geology graduate and explorer Douglas Lawson gave the larger species the name Quetzalcoatlus northropi. It was once thought that the smaller specimens were subadult or juvenile variations of the larger kind, but further evidence suggested they might have been a unique species. Alexander Kelnan and Langston in the late 1990s referred to this second Texas species as a Quetzalcoatlan sp, implying that its status was too unknown to grant it a full new species designation. Although smaller with an estimated wingspan of 5.5 meters, the Quetzalcoatlus species on Earth were more complete than the Q. Northropy holotype and included four partial skulls, 18 feet. While Quetzalcoatlus northropy continues to be the largest member of its species, a new species name Quetzalcoatlus lawson has been given to this animal in recent years. Quetzalcoatlus northropy, properly known as the feathered flying serpent, wasn't just named randomly. The Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, depicted as a feathered snake, inspired the naming of this family of animals. The Quetzalcoatlus is a member of the family as Darkidae, which consists of other flying reptiles. The Colossus was named after Northrop aviation designer John Newton Northrop who was inspired by its size and shape when creating his flying wing aircraft. Most of the family as Darkidae lack teeth and have extremely long, rigid necks. Its lengthy legs resembled those of a stork, and its beak was sharp and pointed. According to scientists, Quetzalcoatlus northropi was as tall as a giraffe. If the reported wingspan of 40 feet is accurate, this species would be the largest known flying mammal. On the other hand, more conservative estimates place the typical wingspan at 33 to 36 feet. According to data analyzed from its fossil remains, it would have stood at least 9.8 feet tall at the shoulders. As a result, it was the largest land carnivore on its continent, even larger than the modern Tyrannosaurus. But Alamosaurus, the southern hemisphere's largest herbivore, is three times as tall as this huge petasaur and weighed 80 to 100 tons more. It has been difficult to determine the exact weight of the Quetzalcoatlus northropi due to a lack of any modern animal with a similar appearance. However, most estimates indicate a 440 to 550 pound weight range for this animal. The issue of the size of Quetzalcoatlus is related to the question of the upper size limit for animal flight and whether Quetzalcoatlus might have reached it. The Asdarkid Hetzagopterus has been estimated to be similar and larger than Quetzalcoatlus. Paleontologists believe that Quetzalcoatlus northropi was most numerous in the Texas region where the Alamosaurus dominated the local fauna. 
Most of the fossils of this species have been discovered in the inland, semi-arid uplands of Texas. Experts are divided on whether or not the apparent increase in the prevalence of Quetacuatlus represents immigration or the expansion of its preferred habitat. Now, how does the Quetzalcoatlus feed? Quetzalcoatlus eating patterns are a matter of debate. After discovering that it lived 248 miles from any shore throughout the Cretaceous period, and that there was no evidence of an inland water supply for kilometers around, it became difficult to ascertain whether Northrop was a fish feeder. The paleontologists who disproved the fish eating theory speculated that the creature was a scavenger waiting in the air like a marabou stork for larger predators to pass so it could pounce on the freshly killed sauropods and other dinosaurs for a quick meal. Not until recently have scientists had a clearer picture of what a Northrop looked like, so they had rejected the scavenging hypothesis, noting that the lower jaws bent so strongly downwards that even when they closed completely, a gap of over 5 centimeters in length remained with both the upper teeth, very distinct from the shaped beaks of highly specialized scavenging birds. They believe that Quetzalcoatlus' long neck bones and large toothless jaw allowed it to catch fish in midair while splitting the waves with its beak, much like modern skimmers. Although the idea of skim feeding caught on, it wasn't until 2007 that it was shown to be untenable for giant petasaurs due to the significant energy costs associated with gliding through the water. Most as darkened artifacts are located in landlocked deposits and, therefore, far from the oceans or other big bodies of water necessary for skimming. Not only is the neck, jaw, and beak structure unique, but no other species is even close to matching them. It's more likely that as darkened were terrestrial stalkers. Like modern storks, they pursued tiny animals on land or in small streams. Although Quetzalcoatlus walked on all fours, like other petasaurs, the proportions of its fore and hind limbs are more like those of modern running ungulate mammals than those of its smaller petasaur relatives. This finding suggests that Quetzalcoatlus and other Asdarkids were adapted especially well to a terrestrial lifestyle. Large or little, petasaurs had massive sternum bones, which is where their flight muscles attach, proving beyond a reasonable doubt that these animals were superb flyers. Considering a Quetzalcoatlus height, it's hard to believe that they can fly. Nevertheless, only a few dozen bones of the bigger species, Quetzalcoatlus northropi, have ever been unearthed, making it difficult to determine how Quetzalcoatlus took off. Models were created from the hundreds of bones for the smaller variant, allowing scientists to conclude the larger one. Several have speculated that Quetzalcoatlus took off either by rocking forward like a bat or rushing and rapidly flapping its wings to gain speed like an albatross. According to recent studies, Quetzalcoatlus may have jumped about 8 feet meters, in the air from a crouched position to acquire flight. After Quetzalcoatlus was high above the ground, it began to flap its wings. Quetzalcoatlus could lift off on its own, but it is possible that once in the air, it will spend much of its time soaring higher. Quetzalcoatlus will remain number one, but a new contender has emerged, and its name is Aramborgiana. The alleged wingspan of this petasaur ranges from 39 to 46 feet, 12 to 13 meters. If so, this organism would be the largest of its kind. However, more recent calculations suggest that its wingspan was underreported. Recent calculations have reduced that estimate. The possible length of this creature's wingspan is between 21 and 7 meters. Quetzalcoatlus has the largest average wingspan across all taxa studied. Nonetheless, paleontologists continually uncover new information. Our current understanding of these petasaurs will likely undergo quick revision. Outro The extinction of the Quetzalcoatlus and many other species, including the dinosaurs, coincided with the closing of the Cretaceous period. Several researchers have hypothesized that the Quetzalcoatlus' ability to fly allowed it to survive a mass extinction. Yet, it could not have lived without nourishment for too long. The new research is incredible, but there is still a lot we need to learn about Quetzalcoatlus, such as the full extent of their food, how they walked, and how they evaded predators. It's hard to picture the monstrously large predator that might kill a massive petasaur, but this is the Cretaceous, so everything is possible. If that's the case, this beast will top them all. Newer calculations, however, dispute that notion about its wingspan being exaggerated. That number has since been revised downward in light of updated predictions. It's possible that this monster had a wingspan of no more than 21 feet, 7 meters. Overall, the largest recorded wingspan belongs to the Quetzalcoatlus. Nonetheless, new findings are continually being made by paleontologists. 
be looking for new information since our current understanding of these petasaurs may undergo quick revisions. If you have reached this far, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so you do not miss any future updates. See you in another video. Until then, take care. Do tell us your views in the comments section.